So this is going to be an ultimate guide to crappie fishing and we're going to go over how to find lakes, where to find the fish, the gear you should use, the best presentations, and then we're just going to sum it all up with a few tips and tricks so you guys can catch more fish. Be sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and drop a comment if you enjoy this content and would like more. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to find a lake. Now my best recommendation is to look at your local survey reports. Um, in Minnesota, it's Minnesota Lake Finder, you know, the Game and Fish in North Dakota has one. Most states have some sort of survey available, and I'll list a few in the Midwest below, but a quick Google search will help you out. But I'll use something like Minnesota Lake Finder to help me find what lakes contain a decent population of crappie. It's really simple. You just search an area, click on a lake, and in this case, it will give you a breakdown of what fish has been caught where, so I at least know where I'm going and that something isn't winter killed or there isn't some certain species there which is important when especially fishing smaller lakes next we're going to talk about finding spots now there's two types of mapping that i recommend that you get um, navionics which is great in some areas and then also the lake master version of that which is a one boat network now that's my go-to in the midwest you can't beat lake master maps and the hummingbird equivalent to that online is the one boat network and that's going to give a detailed breakdown you're going to need mapping because it's going to show you where these fish congregate now in the winter they typically congregate deep and you're going to find them in any sort of bowl um, whether that is in a back bay or the main basin of the lake deep water deep deep water surrounded by shallow water is going to be where you're typically going to find these fish and then any sort of inlet can also help you out um, i find that that brings in a lot of fresh oxygen so when you find areas like that be sure to look for fish there so to break down one of these bowls there's two methods depending on the technology you have. You can use a traditional flasher as basic as it gets. You're just going to be drilling a lot of holes because a lot of times they're going to be suspended, very congregated in one area. The bigger the bowl, the more holes you better be ready to drill, but it's all the same. It will work the same way. The second, of course, is to use live sonar if you have it. I've got the classic Garmin LiveScope LS32 here, and it has been Definitely game changing in the amount of time and energy I spend when drilling out one of these bowls. So what this does is it tells me how far away these fish are going to be and in what area of the bowl they are. So right now it's pointing, I've got a school of fish between 10 and 30 feet to my right. So that's where I'm going to start drilling the holes. And then I can actually see when someone drills um, where that auger pops through and that tells me how close we are or if we're on top of the fish So it really just eliminates the amount of holes being drilled But then a lot of times the best thing you can do is just simply use your flasher to get on them And that is pretty common having someone behind live scope someone with an auger and someone with a flasher is the best way to stay on moving fish now if the fish are it's a cold cold winter day and the fish haven't been moving for a while I'll just put the live scope in down mode and use it as a flasher in live I love that it's my favorite way to fish especially on the cold days when I'm not moving but on a beautiful midday bite when the fish are on the go if you have live keeping someone behind there other people bouncing holes with the flasher is going to be key in turning over more fish so let's talk about gear when it comes to choosing the right gear you want to match the species with the bait, with the rod, in that order. So we're targeting small fish, we're targeting crappie, we're gonna wanna use smaller baits, which means we're gonna wanna use lighter rods, any sort of light, ultralight, fast or extra fast action rod is gonna be great for a jig rod when targeting these fish. Going light allows you to detect lighter bites, but most importantly, it also allows you to work smaller baits. So that's going to be key. A couple things to think about when you're choosing these rods. A more affordable rod is going to be more budget friendly, but it's going to have a lot less control on the end of the rod. It's going to have less sensitivity. And by going with a higher, more expensive end rod, what you're going to find is that you're going to have more control at the end of the rod, and then you're also going to have a lot more sensitivity and easier to detect the bites. Both are going to pull up fish. Both are great options. Just check your budget and how much time you want to spend on the water when trying to determine what expensive a rod is right for you. As for length, you can't go wrong with anything really. Shorter is gonna work better in a shack. Longer is gonna give you more leverage and is nice for outside. I'm using a 32 inch pan dancer from St. Croix. This is one of my favorite rods. It's 32 inches and it's kind of a perfect compromise from that longer rod with more leverage, but compact enough I can use in my flip over. 
one of the most important features of all is going to have that fluorescent tip. Now, a more expensive rod, you're going to be able to feel those light, light bites a lot better. But if you're using a cheaper rod like the Panfish Combo Series, you're going to want that fluorescent tip. This is especially important for detecting those bites because you're not going to feel them as easily. So for line, I recommend going light because you need to match it to the rod. I've just got a four pound braid and a four pound fluorocarbon leader. I like it because it has less line twists. A lot of people like mono. You can use, you can get a two, three, four pound mono and it's going to be fabulous. The only trade off on that is you're going to get line spins if you're not rapidly replacing it but you also get line stretch which on the toughest bite days I think is crucial because they're not going to detect the tension when they breathe it in and out if you have an underwater camera you will notice a lot of that going on that's where monofilament is going to give you the upper hand but it does come out the expense of maintenance and changing out that line for a real I've got a Fluger president I've got the smallest size they offer a size 20 it works perfect on this setup and ideally it's just small and compact and reliable which is all you're going to need. Now let's talk about baits. So for baits I like having small tungsten jigs on me at all time, small tungsten spoons and some lead jigs for that slower fall. Tungsten jig is going to get you down faster and be smaller for the size. Lead you're going to be able to be more creative, you have more options out there and that slow fall can be especially enticing on a tough bite day. I usually tip those with either a crappie minnow which is just a small fat head a plastic which is deadly on an aggressive day because you can get down there and keep your bait on there quicker or on the toughest days I like a classic waxworm tungsten combo you can't beat that they have a very very small package then when you're trying to get those midwinter tough bite fish you guys can get any of the baits I mentioned down below at LearnNet. just go to learnnet.com use code Nicole15 and they've got a variety of brands including a bunch of my favorite plastics and the Lindy brand and just use Nicole 15 for 15% 15 off. So there's no perfect formula for catching crappie at any given, any given time, but something I've learned over the years is uh, using finesse movements and slow and steady movements are gonna help you turn over more fish than erratic movements. The number one issue I had when I started crappie fishing was I was fishing them like a predator, but a lot of times I've learned through fishing with my good friends like Anna, that doing slow and steady raises can be the best way to turn over a fish. And when you jig, just focus on small finesse movements and rely on watching the end of that rod, that fluorescent tip, to catch these fish. A lot of times I've found my biggest fish, including my 16s, to be caught on the highest flyer. When they come through, they're above the school, and then they're oftentimes a little more aggressive. So just work those higher fish, because sometimes they are the biggest ones. So in summary, here are some tips to help you guys catch crappie during the ice season. So tip one is using something like Minnesota Lake Finder, any sort of state survey report to find bodies of water that are manageable and that have crappie in them. They will show you the species in each of these bodies of water. And if you see a decent population of fish, it's well worth giving it a shot. Two, look for deep bowls wherever you are fishing. It can be in a back bay, it can be on the main lake, the basin, it can be next to inlets, but they're oftentimes going to be suspended in a deep area surrounded by shallow water. Three, from there, what I recommend doing is thinking about when you're fishing, especially midwinter, you can have success all day long, but I highly recommend that if you want to make the most of your time, try the low light periods. The bite typically turns on and can be especially deadly at night. And that's because the plankton come up out of these bowls at night and they feed on them and you're going to find them in high numbers and they're likely not going to be moving as quickly as they may be during the day. The tip is going to be how to break down these balls. I recommend using something like live sonar if you have it to see the fish. You're gonna be able to see them up to 100, 120 feet out, and you're gonna be able to drill on top of them there. Otherwise, what you can do is punch a bunch of holes across the bowl and then take your flasher and just hop around until you mark them. Even when using live sonar, I highly recommend having a flasher because you can stay on the fish when they're moving rapidly. If they're very, if it's very cold and you're not going to be moving much, putting the live scope in down mode can be a lot of fun. Finally, for presentations, I recommend that you just go slow and steady. Use something light, like a lightweight rod. I love the St. Croix Panfish series or the St. Croix Pan Dancer. They're going to have a fluorescent tip and a very lightweight feel. So you're going to be able to detect those bites and work those smallest baits. You can't go wrong with anything tungsten, very small tungsten jigs, small spoons. 
and just tip them with a wax worm or a crappie minnow or on a good bite a plastic which is going to be more durable and allow you to catch more fish you guys can find my favorite below finally go out have fun let me know how fishing's been and whatever tips you'd like to add to this video below and i'll see you guys on the next episode